Well, let's bring in our panel uh, for their reaction to all of this. Joining us to discuss political commentator Derek Green and chairman at Reform California, Carl DeMeo, also a former Nevada state GOP chairwoman and Republican strategist, Amy Tarkanian. Uh, Amy, I'll start with you. Just your reaction to what the State Department had to say today or didn't have to say. Sure. Well, it's not reassuring at all. It didn't leave us with much hope. Mm -hmm. And it didn't just leave Americans um, with much hope, but it left the international community, I believe, feeling the same. When you are hearing from the, the British Parliament a tongue lashing, when we are finding out that the Canadian Prime Minister has actually been in conversation with Hillary Clinton, who is not even a current um, elected official. When we're finding out that Boris Johnson reached out to President Biden on a Monday and didn't hear from him until the following evening, there is a problem. When the people who are involved, the countries who are involved in NATO, are upset that President Biden did this unilaterally instead of communicating with the world leaders, mm -hmm. this is an atrocity. This is incompetence, this is stupidity, this is ignorance, and this is uh, ego, quite honestly. And I think that this administration has known for a very long time that this would ensue, this chaos would ensue. Mm -hmm. We have known since at least 2013 on record, a former Taliban leader by the name of Mullah Omar had actually stated publicly that it would take less than a week once Americans pulled out for them to take back over. Yeah, incompetent and dangerous because uh, other folks all over the world that will want to do us harm are watching how we've responded to all of this. Uh, let's take a listen to one of the more controversial remarks from President Biden's ABC News interview when he was asked about some of the more horrific images that we have all seen. We've all seen the pictures. We've seen those hundreds of people packed into a C-17. We've seen Afghans falling. That was four days ago, five days ago. What did you think when you first saw those pictures? What I thought was we're, we have to gain control of this. We have to move this more quickly. We have to move in a way in which we can take control of that airport. And we did. Mm -hmm. okay. So, Derek, does it even matter if it was four or five days ago as if I was okay? even though it was actually just two days ago uh, prior to his interview when we saw those images. That's right. And, and it's interesting because I think that we address this issue from a political standpoint and a military perspective. But I think what precedes both is the immorality of the decision to move unilaterally when we didn't have a strategy in place to uh, excavate the uh, United States citizens and those people who helped us over the past 20 years. Mm -hmm. And so it was a political bl blunder. It was a military blunder. But it was also immoral. And the fact that he's simply trying to diminish the deaths of uh, the, these Afghans who, think about it, they have to, they're, they're, they're in the midst of desperation. They, they feel that they're going to be killed or tortured by the Taliban. So they're taking a risk of, of holding on to, uh, you know, a C-17, uh, 30,000, you know, feet in the air mm -hmm. to try to, to avoid the Taliban. That's a level of desperation that I don't think a lot of Americans can empathize with or sympathize with. So for the president to diminish that is, is just, it really is a, is a, a sad commentary on his empathy uh, and his leadership. Yeah, and Carl, the, the latest images, uh, even beyond that, we still have parents um, lifting their toddlers across mm. people, trying to get them to troops, hoping that they can lift them over a fence, and then the child or the toddler will somehow make their way like this right here. It breaks your heart. All they want mm. is for their child to get to safety and hopefully somehow get out of harm's way. Yeah, this is not just uh, negligence anymore. This is not just Joe Biden failing and bringing great risk onto our country because he's diminished our foreign policy standing as well as our national security standing. Our enemies are absolutely loving this. Our friends are now realizing we won't have their back. Uh, but he has now shown a level of callousness that I even thought was impossible from this guy. Uh, he is now responsible for not one, but two major humanitarian crises one on our southern border, one in Afghanistan, and he seems to be nonchalant about it. Oh, it's just a few days ago. That was several days ago. 
The reality is we have uh, an unknown number of Americans still trapped behind enemy lines in Afghanistan who are now in harm's way. They've been told to shelter in place. Well, for how long? It's not like this is like a hurricane that comes through town. Uh, the Taliban are in control. There's no plan to get them out. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Afghanis who have uh, collaborated with the United States that are in grave danger. Uh, so this is a humanitarian crisis for our citizens who are put at risk, as well as those who relied on us, relied on our representations to help us yeah. out, and now we've abandoned them. Indeed. All right, panel, stand by, if you would, please. Uh